In this lesson, we're going to explore a couple of very useful methods we have available for data frames, as well as doing yet another explanation of vectorized operations now with data frames. The concept of vectorized operations is always the same from NumPy to pandas series and to pandas data frames, because to be honest, a data frame is, as you know, just a combination of series and a series is pretty much a NumPy array. So again, the whole the whole concept is the same. What is challenging usually with vectorized operations is writing, wrapping your head around them and understanding this concept of declarative programming. So we're going to do a couple more examples and hopefully along with the practice it's going to make a little bit more sense. So to get started, let's see two very useful methods to quickly explore things in your data frames. And this also applies to series, by the way. So for example, given our data frame, you can, in this case, the continent column is a, what we call usually a categorical column. We actually have lessons about categorical types and the analysis of categorical types in depth. But for now, you can, uh, you can, probably see that this is a categorical column. The values that are part of continent are America, Europe, Asia, and a couple of continents we have, it's a limited set. So you can see what are the those um, values that are part of this column, all those unique values. So it doesn't matter if this continent column has a million elements, you're gonna have here just a summary of all the unique occurrences of them. So you can quickly spot what are the available values here? This is going to be very useful when we start doing data cleaning later. A similar method is the value count one. And what it's going to do, it's going to give you again, the unique values, but it's also give you a summary of how many occurrences of, of those values you have. Usually, personally, I usually use value can, counts more often because it's good to have an idea of how many you have. Again, uh, we will be using this in data cleaning. So if you have uh, here, you might find a continent that it's invalid. So you're going to clearly see it and you'll, you will also have a proportion of how many um, you have in there. It's something, sometimes it's common to use this divided by the total, for example, divided by the total shape of the um, data, data set. So you have an idea of the proportion aside from the absolute value. Now we have close to 60%. We know that 60% of our values are of type Europe. This, by the way, is a vectorized operation, even if it doesn't look so. Value counts is returning a new series and we are dividing it by the total length of our data frame. Head and tail, a couple others we've seen. We don't have to get into much detail with it. And now we have a couple more uh, vectorized operations. So given, for example, the population column, and I put this here, we will be able to just multiply everything to do any mathematical operation that we want with these columns. Again, conceptually speaking, this is nothing related to data frames. This is pretty much the same thing we did in our um, series lecture because df at population is a series and we can again do pretty much any express any mathematical operation that we want but it also works of course with data frames so in this case we have an entire data frame we can for example in this case multiply it by 1 million and everything is multiplied by 1 million and of course remember we are receiving a new data frame it's not um it's not modifying the original one we're just receiving a new copy here that we if we want to keep using it we should probably store it as an intermediate variable another sort of vectorized operations are the ones that involve uh, multiple series or just data frames working together right so in this case we have what we can do is we can do a, an operation that combines population and gdp right in what is called a re regular broadcasting operation so in this case um, we can divide the GDP of the countries by the population. And what we get right here um, is just, again, the result of doing Canada's uh, GDP divided by Canada's population, Canada's, uh, France GDP divided by France population, Germany's GDP divided by Germany's population, etc. It's a vectorized 
a broadcaster operation and as the indices are shared among them, the operation will just align perfectly as we are expecting. Something else we can do is we can construct other series or other data frames and we can make them, we can combine them with um, our own data frames or series. So for example, take a look at this very simple series I created, it has just two values, GDP and HDI. And what we're, to, what we're gonna do here is we have an original data frame that has two columns, GDP and HDI. What we are going to do here is create an operation between our original data frame in which GDP and HDI are columns. You can think of them as sort of a, a, a vertical way of expressing them, just uh, GDP, HDI. And we're gonna combine that with a series that you can think about it as horizontal. We have GDP as the index, HDI as index. So this is a column in the original data frame in the crisis data for, uh, series, sorry, is an index. HDI is a column in the crisis series, it's an index or it's a row. So we can combine those two and they will align as we expect. In this case, I'm gonna add a crisis, which actually these are negative numbers. So it's pretty much the same as subtract the regular uh, numbers. Um, what we're doing is we're applying crisis, we say. So let's say we have a huge humanitarian crisis and we're gonna, of course, decrease all these values altogether. There you go. So we are decreasing, for example, GDP by 1 million in all of them and HDI by 0.3 in all of them. So what was 0.91, now it's 0.61. We de uh, decrease 0.3. What was uh, 0.89 is now 0.59. We see again the decrease. And again, this is a very powerful feature in which we can combine, if you want, these um, data frames and this series along as some members are similar. In this case, the columns match the uh, indices that we have in this one. So we have a couple other, um, uh, as usual, universal functions. They will always work with pretty much uh, any data frame that has numerical, numerical types. So in this case, when we do a describe as we did before, we see that only the numerical columns are expressed in, uh, let me copy this one right here. They are, it's, they are the only ones with um, the describe operations, just the numerical ones. And if you have a data frame and you do something, something like, for example, the max of the entire data frame, you have an idea of, uh, you get a res, uh, summary, if you want, of all the columns in the data frame. Again, this scribe is giving you pretty much the most complete um, summary, but let's say you wanna do something that it's not part of the describe, you wanna get quantiles in the order of, I don't know, 0.2, which is not part of the regular one describe, you get, oh, remove this quantile and we get the point two that we need. Again, it's not part of the original one. So I recommend you to keep exploring this. We're gonna talk very quickly now about um, sorting, which is pretty much the final thing we have to talk about. In the terms of sorting, the most important part is remember this is similar as with a series. You can either sort by, by values or by the index and you can sort ascending or descending in ascending or descending order. Uh, but there is one more addition for data frames and it's what's that column that you wanna use in order to sort the data frame. So I wanna sort it by population. I wanna sort it by GDP. I wanna sort it by surface area, right? So in this case, you can just uh, sort in this case by population. What you receive here or what you can pass here is actually a list of values. So if there was a tie here, which it isn't, but let's say the two countries, they have the same population, the second parameter it's gonna, that it's gonna be used for sorting is gonna be by GDP. Okay, so again, if you have a repetition here, a duplicated value, it's gonna use I'm GDP sorry. for that. Again, changing the order, if it's ascending or descending is simple. We just need to use the ascending parameter to either true or false. And remember finally that all these operations are immutable. These are original data frame. If you want to uh, make an actual change to it, you will have to pass a parameter in place. 
and remember that this thing doesn't return a value. So again, let me show you once again the previous example. We did sort by population on ascending false mode, basically descending. So United States was at the top. The result was a new data frame. We did get a result. We could have sorted like sorted DF here. I could have um, stored this here and use it. But the original one is not modified. So this one is still unmodified. If I make the same change here, population descending, and I do an in place true, there is nothing return, returns none. But from now on, the data frame will actually be affected. And this is going to be uh, changed. The sort index operation works in the same way. And we have finally a new one, which is or an important one, which is the reindex method that will let you pretty much set the index in whatever order you prefer. That is pretty much about it. Again, all the concepts we've seen in this lesson, they are pretty much the same as we saw with Pandas series. From now on, it's going to be pretty much uh, um, an equivalent thing to say I'm working with a data frame column or a series, the operations will be the same.